Hello, everybody. My name is Dion Morales, your host of the Gold Squadron Podcast, and we're coming to you live from the top four of the World Championships of X-Wing. Today, I'm joined by my good friend, James Ritter. Hey, guys. Top four. Uh, one of these players will be playing in the final in just about an hour and a half after this game. Uh, very excited uh, to see who we'll have as a finalist for our World Championship event. This match we have Mario Nunez Jimenez versus Niklas God. Mario is out of Spain. Niklas, Sweden. We have a European battle <laughs> of, all this of way? space. <laughs> all this way just to play against each other. Yeah, they probably could have played somewhere in the middle between yeah. the two, but it's all right. It's all right. This is the World <laughs> Championships, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Our stream is brought to you by so many different people. Shout out first to our main sponsors, our patrons. Thank you so much for your support over the years and helping us grow to get to this point where we could cover this event. And Curl Park Creators, our longtime uh, sponsor. Go ahead, use Curl Park Creators to upgrade your favorite Atomic Mass games uh, gear and, uh, and get yourself the sweet acrylic tokens. Now, thank you to Atomic Mass Games and Adepticon for bringing us in and bringing you the World Championship coverage here on Gold Squadron Podcast. We really appreciate it. We look forward to coming back in the future. And if you have enjoyed our coverage this weekend, please reach out to Atomic Mass Games via their social media and let them know we really enjoyed Gold Squadron and we would love to see them back at future events. Not just Worlds. Let's do more. Thank let's, you, Dion. I yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. I think we did pretty good. <laughs> 10 out of 10, it might be. That's right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to start breaking down these lists. Everybody at home, it is time for you to choose your champion. James, let's get it started. All right. On the right, we have Nicholas God uh, flying a uh, pretty uh, unique first order list. Um, we see a couple of first order variations in the event uh, this weekend, but I think this is a pretty pretty unique version. Uh, we have a uh, four TIE FO, one TIE SF, and one TIE Baron. I'll go ahead and go through these TIE uh, FOs first. We have Commander Malarus uh, has the ability to uh, convert all eyeball results to good results uh, for the entire mm -hmm. round two times per game by just taking a stress. Uh, has mag pulse warheads. That's an interesting choice. Usually we see uh, Malaris with those cluster missiles, uh, but not today. <laughs> that mag pulse missile can be just as impactful in the game, if not more. Like sometimes you just need utility and not straight damage. A single crit yeah. can make a huge difference. Well, the, it's the jam deplete. In yeah, my that opinion. too. <laughs> the jam deplete is just huge in some games. Uh, we have Lieutenant Gaelic, also an initiative five, coming out of the Hot Shots and Aces two pack for this one. Uh, Gaelic is able to perform a coordinate action when one of his friendlies die. Uh, he's that harsh instructor. Uh, learn your lessons, you you, uh, <laughs> you peon TIE fighter pilots. Uh, has elusive and ion cannon here. Um, uh, the ion cannon uh, is really going to ho hopefully help keep these uh, rebel ships in line uh, and not uh, K turn in behind them. Uh, DT-79 has uh, elusive and uh, advanced optics. Uh, this is the first in the duo of the red token for extra attack die. Uh, this one is uh, DT, or Jace Rucklin, uh, from the Resistance show, uh, is going to take a strain to perform or to add an ad attack die on his attacks. Uh, the other ship we have here, the the, the uh, duo here, the other side of this duo, is going to be uh, Scorch has fanatical, elusive uh, advanced optics. Um, uh, Scorch, uh, a more long, long time staple, but DT uh, quickly becoming uh, just as popular as Scorch, uh, has fanatical, elusive advanced optics, a very strong uh, Three die, three die attack, especially when they loses that first shield, has an eyeball to hit conversion with fanatical, and then a blank to hit conversion with optics. So uh, that normal popcorn roll that we see is exactly what you want to see with Scorch. Uh, we see a backdraft here. Uh, this is going to be in the tie SF fire. Backdraft loves to take that uh, heavy weapons turret, turn it to the rear, and perform those rear arc attacks. Because um, while he does that, he gets to roll an additional attack die. 
uh, has the special forces gunner upgrade, of course, to still allow him to uh, scorch the, uh, sorry, backdraft to come in with that three die attack. Has elusive and advanced optics. Um, that elusive and advanced optics, such a great combination uh, for a little bit of defense and a little bit of offense, uh, and hopefully be able to use all your tokens when you need to. In the last ship we see here, we see Ember in the TIE Baron Interceptor. Uh, has Lone Wolf and Elusive. We do see Ember uh, <coughs> alone, is one way I'll say that, um, <laughs> in, in the top of the board there, facing down West Jansen. Uh, so hopefully we'll get be able to use that Lone Wolf to do some rerolls. Uh, also has Elusive for some extra defensive rerolls, so could it potentially re-roll re -roll mm -hmm. two Evade Dice uh, in a single attack. Uh, Ember also has um, the ability to, uh, while attacking, if the defender has a damage friendly, including themselves, at range 0 to 1, uh, they cannot spend focus or calculate tokens. These rebels love to take focuses. Uh, they may not be able to use them uh, once the shields are down on some of these ships. All right, on the other side of the board, Mario Nunez Jimenez uh, was bringing a squad that many saw at first and said, that is interesting. <laughs> that is, he, he said, he said he had many people making fun of him for bringing this yeah. list. I was like, bro, you are killing it. You are killing it. With <laughs> Alphabet Squadron. With Alphabet Squadron. <laughs> Theme added. Gotta love it. Alright, so here we go. Let's go ahead and start breaking this down. Um, leading the pack here at Initiative 5, we have Wes Jansen, who we talked about earlier. The Jam Master Extraordinaire, after you perform an attack, spend the charge to assign the defender a jam. Uh, after you defend, it goes both ways, right? You may spend one charge to assign the attacker one jam token. Um, that is absolutely great ability. We saw it to great effect when we saw him on stream in the earlier rounds of Swiss. He also has Proton Torpedoes and R4 Astromech, kind of... X-Wing, classic upgrades there, a little bit more maneuverable, and a four-die punch when you need it. Continuing there at Initiative 5, helping out to provide some bonus actions here for the squad, especially giving uh, Wes Jansen an ability to get target lock focus is Aaron Kraken in the Z95. After you perform an attack, you may choose one friendly ship at range one. That ship may perform an action, treating it as red. We have Plasma Torpedoes and Elusive on Aaron Kraken. So watch out for that Z95 to really do a great job of helping boost the synergy in the squad. Speaking of synergy, Dutch Vander, a.k.a. Gold Leader, does a great job with his two Proton Torpedoes. Terrafon Belly Run ability, after you perform a target lock, you may choose one friendly ship at range one to three. That ship may acquire a lock on the object you locked, ignoring range restrictions. So that uh, that could be big in this list with so many missiles and torpedoes being equipped here. We got 10 Num, who is just a bruiser in the B-Wing. Stabilized S-Foils jamming beam. Watch out for proton torpedoes there as well. And elusive. Rounding out the squad, we got Keo Venzi, who we saw in the last match as well. Uh, has become a rebel staple here. The A-Wing has the ability to use the Force and regen it by doing a slide slip. It's You get one cool ability and get it back by doing another cool ability. Has concussion missiles and elusive there as well. We are playing the scenario Assault at the Satellite Array. James, go ahead and break it down. How does that one work? Yeah, Assault at the Satellite Array is the uh, hold down these objectives by uh, staying at range one at the end of the round. Um, and uh, two. Um, so at, at the end of the round, uh, you get a point for each objective that you are at range zero to one of that you have more ships uh, in range of that objective. So uh, in the event of a tie, you need to make sure that you have more ships. We, um, Medium ships and large ships count as two, but we don't have any of those in this game. Uh, we got old school here, all small base. All small bases. Um, yeah, the rebels, the rebel, the rebellion remnant uh, is trying to take on some first order here, uh, trying to uh, reclaim the galaxy. Uh, see if these rebels can shut it down and say no thank you with some proton torpedoes. That may be one way to do it. That, I mean, that, that's what it is, right? <laughs> a lot of people talk about the tyranny of three agility. On the other side, you go, well, how about the aggressiveness of four attack dice? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, that, that can push through damage. Yeah. 
I think honestly the hardest choices that um, the hardest thing that uh, Mario is going to have to decide in this game here is what to do with that Aaron Kraken action because um, every single one of them is a great choice. We have Dutch giving out uh, uh, he can he, uh, Kraken can give Dutch a lock action, and then Dutch can give that lock back to him or to one of the other proton torpedo carriers, uh, or give a uh, lock to Keo to shoot that concussion missile. Uh, Aaron Kraken can give that action to uh, Tin uh, to do a focus barrel or roll lock. Uh, could give that to uh, Keo to do a focus boost. There's so many good options, and all of them. I, 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 they're all better. Each one is better than the last. So we just see we see a attempt for a target lock here on one of the Tie Fighters. Which Tie Fighter is? Is this Captain Malrus? I think that is because Malrus is purple. Yeah, that has to yep. be Malrus. Gonna try to get that uh, jam off on Aaron Kraken. Nicholas is first play. Oh, he's gonna go on to uh, the Y wing here. Going on to the Y wing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Wow, uh, so interesting choice there, because uh, he's gonna jam off the focus. Um, but Aaron Kraken uh, is gonna shoot after Nicholas's uh, initiative five, so Malaris and Gaelic. Uh, so he's gonna have an opportunity to react and uh, get that uh, lock action to Dutch. Well, with uh, with that potential jam, if he's doing, if he's planning on doing the Mag Pulse Warhead, he is at least making it so that the Proton Torpedo isn't fully modified. If if he decides to shoot Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, Proton Torpedoes are still terrifying, just with a lock, j just just with a lock. Um, but uh, they're definitely even more terrifying when they have that lock focus. Uh, so yeah, maybe maybe I don't want to be facing down a lock focused. All right, here we go. Malaris just activated her ability, her ability there, giving her positive results on offense and defense throughout the entire turn. Here we go, shake it up. Here it comes. First attack. Looks like we may have lost the dice camera. All right, we'll just uh, go check on that real quick. Yep, let's check our side first. All right, that's been corrected. Next attack coming in. Hit crit focus. Full string there coming in. After spending the lock. Get back into the flow here. So we did see the mag pulse go over there to Dutch. We also saw some more damage going into Dutch Vander. Wow, uh, the target priority of Nicholas to target Dutch to make sure that he is ionized and jam off the focus. So now, even if uh, Kraken tries to give Dutch an action, he literally can't do an action. He's ionized. He's already done the focus action this turn. Yep. And can't take a lock because uh, he is ionized, but then and again, he couldn't even keep the lock because the ionization will prevent that lock from being acquired. Update here from Jason Grimwolf, our sideline reporter for the other top four game. Uh, update. Rebel A-Wings starting off very fast, already in the Imperial deployment zone, uh, trying to catch Battle of Yavin, Vader. Two A-Wings are staring him down. Captain Faroff is currently approaching Battle of Yavin Han in the center of the board. We'll bring you more as we get it. Thank you to uh, Jason for that coverage. Here we go. A-Wing. Sorry, Z-95 uh, had a shot there. Two dice. Next shot here. This is a four uh, think, dice attack coming in. Yeah, I think this is Wes Jansen. Firing into Ember. That's a full string. Three hits and a crit. Two evades. Spends for three. 
The jam will happen afterwards, which will break the lock. That's a single shield off on Ember. Yeah, you see uh, the, uh, Mario already holding the charge over there for West Jansen saying, I'm going to jam you. You gonna spin your focus or you lose your lock. I don't care whichever one. <laughs> All right, next shot here coming in from the first order. Uh, looks to be hit, focus, focus, one evade, safe. All right, uh, no shot for backdraft in the in the back of the uh, uh, the back of the line here. Had to stay back to make sure he got that objective. Oh, well, a couple more shots here. A couple more shots. Not quite done. DT798 looking for options here. Ooh, a bunch of three die shots coming in here. Uh, one from DT798, one from Scorch, most likely. Uh, I think right now D uh, Duchess just shields down. No damage cards just yet. All right, Ooh. spends for two. All right. Spends for three, excuse me. And that is a blank focus. All of that's going into Dutch. Hit, hit, crit. We'll find out what the critical damage is here in a moment. It is a fuel leak. That's going to matter. Uh, I mean, if he even survives the next couple of attacks here from... Uh, the FO may just <laughs> may just push through enough damage to get rid of it. That's right. All right, we're gonna go ahead and have a judge check range here. Yeah, uh, we have uh, plenty of judges here for uh, the, the table. We only have two, two tables. Uh, all That's, these judges, yeah. all they're just like walking around, like staring. Nothing. <laughs> like, to do, do you need anything? Do you need, I, I can check that arc for you if you need. <laughs> <laughs> Please let me do something. Uh, they've been great this whole weekend, um, taking care of us. All right, so it looks like we're marking a ship out of the way to help determine. Whether or not we have arc on Dutch, current positioning says no. Yeah, uh, but sometimes the angles get weird. Could uh, could still be in. Definitely in for Kraken at the very least. Yes. All right. So looks like that's a no go. We'll be able to fire at uh, Aaron Kraken. All right, takes a stress to roll an additional attack die. Uh, so it's going to be three on three. Here we go. I, I like the little rub on the dice <laughs> as he lifts it. Hit it, crit. That is going to be two evades. Uh, sorry, one evade. Ooh. Elusive is going to be taken two. Shields are going to be down on Aaron Kraken. And Elusive has been used up. Will be recharged on a, uh, a K-turn. Yeah, unlikely for Scorch to get that elusive back just due to um, him always stressing himself to roll that additional attack die. All right. Uh, things are coming up. Nicholas right now uh, rolls a single attack die from Dutch because of that deplete. Plenty of evades. Uh, FO safe here. Uh, looks like Keo may have a shot onto DT. Uh, we'll definitely check. Always check range. Um, even if it, if, it, if it looks a little bit long, just mm -hmm. always check range. There and here go. we go. Hit crit. Well, loves to spin that forth. That way he can do that side slip. That's right. Here we go. Rub a dub dub enough, uh, not enough evades many. in my cup. He rolled too many. It's range three. Yeah, but he's strained. I think they just realized it. There we go. All right, there. Strain token. We did it. And that is a blank out. DT has elusive. 
He's going to go ahead and spend yeah. it, try to save some health here. You really don't want to take that critical damage. A single evade will do that, only takes a shield. Uh, Elusa sometimes, sometimes misses, but sometimes really hits, like right there. Yep. No rub that time. You got, rub it. Why are we analyzing the use of a dice cup? Come on, guys. Hey, come it's, on, it's friends. Working. It's working. <laughs> All right. So that, that's that's going to be going to be read. It rolls three blanks. Why? Because he didn't do the little rub rub. The little rub rub. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You got to flow. Use it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. If you if it if something's working for you, do it. <laughs> All right, and then. They're going to uh, go ahead and update the score here. Taking a look at Assault scoring. Keo in the bottom left-hand corner gets one for the Rebellion. Bottom center is for the First Order. Uh, the middle objective yeah, is yeah. contested. I, I don't know. I think both the Rebels are in, but I'm not sure if Lieutenant Gaelic was able to squeeze in there as well. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and uh, might be going to the Rebellion. We'll go ahead and get that update from James when he gets back. All right, they're measuring that center right now. And what was uh, what was the diet? What, what's the two and two? Yeah, so the rebels claim the center. Keo grabs bottom left. Uh, the Epos grab the bottom, and the very top is contested. And uh, Backdraft grabs the right one, and the top one is contested uh, by Wes and Ember. Uh, somebody says I'd like to see X-wing themed dice towers. No, I'm good. I'm okay with the cup, but dice to dice towers are you know, for uh, for RPGs. Let's keep them in RPG land. They can stay over there, <laughs> in my opinion. But that's not what we're focused on here. We're in the top four of the X-wing World Championships, friends. We have this game and one more, and we will know who our world champion of X-wing is. That is absolutely insane. This has been a long journey to get here. While we're quickly in planning, let's take a quick uh, quick peek at our bracket. If you haven't been following here, we're in the top four. You can see our matchups right there, where we came from. Our last four competitors, United States, uh, Poland, um, Sweden, and Spain. Andrew Cox, Bartosz, Nicolas, Mario. Absolutely great spread. Uh, two Rebel lists. Absolutely unexpected unexpected a yeah. lot of people no, weren't no, thinking no that one. rebels would make a splash <laughs> yeah everyone everyone uh was uh definitely down on rebels going into uh the world's event i think i want to say that we had uh rebels had the lowest uh showing uh as far as factions go uh, i want to say they had the por uh, poorest representation the lowest representation uh but a really great cut rate for sure mm-hmm Everyone underestimates the rebels until they don't. Yeah, <laughs> you don't. won't. You probably probably won't after this. <laughs> yeah, it may, you maybe you maybe you don't now. All right, we got an update here from sideline reporter Jason Grimwolf. Update: Three A wings uh, caught Vader in their arcs. Vader has no shields and only one force going into the next round. Objective score of two to one in favor of the Rebellion. Bartosh in the lead there. Yeah, so we'll probably see a two bank or two sloop uh, from. Uh, Oh, no, two, sorry, two bank or two side slip. I'm sorry, Jason. I cannot spe Keo. spread your rebel propaganda. I am an equal faction lover. Let's see if you get a reaction on him. <laughs> Remember, today's stream is brought to you by Atomic Mass Games and Adepticon. Thank you so much for bringing us here. Also, thank you to our patrons and gold... Um, of Gold Squadron Podcast, as well as Curl Paw Creatives. Here we go. First player looks to be to Niklas again. 
Side slip time. Okay, side slips that way. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, may put Keo in a little bit of danger. Uh, but we'll see. All right, taking a look here at the Rebels. Talking about how the side slip works. Remember from uh, yeah. HMP days, lean back. You set the template in its normal spot, you lean back towards the curve, and that's how you do the side slip. All right, next we should be having the FOs coming up next after we figure out what Keo's action is going to be. All right. Uh, yeah, I think it's on to the initiative fours, which Nicholas is first player. So all these uh, tie, uh, FO tie fighters and backdraft will have to move first. And Ember. Ember is also an initiative four pilot. All right, looks like we're reaching for a target lock. Wow. Wow. That's very close, whether that's in or not. That's so interesting. Why would you go for a target lock? You have optics. Uh, just much better upgrade, in my opinion. Well, I think it's a target lock from Keo. Oh, Keo oh, on yeah. to DT. I'm in on that. <laughs> yeah, there and there it is. I'm in on that. Target lock acquired. We'll see what uh, DT798 uh, does. It is most likely going to be strained if they use their ability. Ember with a one hard here. Trying to see if we can catch Wes Jansen turning in front of them. Takes a focus. Backdraft coming up next. Looks oh, like uh, we're hitting the gas here. Jeez. Crowding the Rebellion. Probably trying to get that back arc in position. Uh, yeah, the fact that um, the FO was able to completely uh, dodge the arc uh, and range of the B-Wing uh, honestly, the biggest punch in this list uh, uh, was a great, great round two for the FO. All right, waiting for a action decision here. We got to focus on to backdraft. Next ship moving here at initiative four. He's going to go ahead and be scorched. Going to use the side to side method. If you're a newer player, maybe you're not familiar with X Wing, um, the math works out where if you go out the front guides, it's the same as going from hash mark to hash mark on the side. Uh, a very clever trick to avoid moving other ships. The positioning of ships is the one of the most sacred things in X-Wing. <laughs> and uh, every time you mark a ship, you do add... You, you lose a little bit. You lose a little bit of accuracy every single time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a side slip that uh, you, you, you just go forward instead. <laughs> All right, we're going to take that barrel roll. And while he completes that barrel, we have over 900 people watching. I know we had 1,200 earlier when the internet went out, of course. Um, but <laughs> that, that is we, amazing. We broke the internet, Dion. We, we could, broke, we broke it. Too many it. people. Can't handle it. I said my goal for the weekend was 1,000. And uh, we are, we're, we're starting to meet those expectations. We're approaching expectations, as we would say, in the education business. There's the focus. Approaching expectations. Yep. <laughs> All right. We'll see uh, Dutch do that ion maneuver. Uh, which way are we going to go here? It looks like to be a straight maneuver. That may not bump, which means that we're going to get an unstressed focus. All right. Dutch just... One forward to victory. I'm a Y-wing. I like going slow, making sure to keep things in my front arc. Now, here's the question. What will happen with the action? Probably uh, end up getting past an action by a buddy. Oh, boy. Uh, There's that high-pitched sound again. I think somebody's pulling around a very squeaky cart. Yep. It's a garbage cart. <laughs> yeah. If, sorry, if you, everybody. If, yeah, we cannot you, do anything about if that. If you can hear it, yeah, sorry. 
Um, and we see Tin Nam, uh, very maneuverable in, the, in this case. Uh, it was able to get in the side arc of uh, Backdraft. Gonna be uh, doing some good work there. Uh, so this is Malaris not getting fooled by um, this B-Wing coming in. Uh, says, hello, I would like to play. You're going to shoot my friend, I shoot you. <laughs> he was a, another too hard there, again, using that side-to-side -side method. Do we have anybody? I'm curious. You know, one of the things we've talked about quite a bit, uh, you know, actually, I'll save that for the next thing. Let's, let's keep, let's keep, where I want to talk about viewership and when they started playing X-Wing. We'll talk about that later. Okay. And oh. that's a target lock place down. Oh, okay. From the Malaris, the commander. The commander. All right, this looks to be a three bank. Uh... No, you can do it. Um, a three bank. There looks to be a bump for uh, Gaelic. Um, little hand cramp. <laughs> uh, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> <laughs> well, as they're resolving this bump, I'm, what I'm curious about is are there any people watching this stream that started playing X Wing, got interested? most like recently like maybe you started playing uh while the shutdowns happen uh in the last couple of years maybe your introduction to x-wing was before we were able to return to big in-person events i th i'm curious about that crowd because i see a lot of awesome uh tried and trues people who have been around since the beginning of uh, of gold squadrons run here uh bringing you guys live x-wing coverage uh i want to see some of our new friends out there i said 1977 Fair. <laughs> uh, and we got some out there. Looks like we, which is I saw, awesome. I saw a couple in there said they started playing in the, as late as recently as December. That's awesome. Well, welcome to the fam. Here we go. Uh, oh Hard boy. three there from West Jansen sitting in front of Ember. That is probably range one. Uh, of M, uh, of oh, for from Ember from to Ember West. to West. Absolutely, but. I think West Jansen may have a good proton torpedo into backdraft. Uh, taking out that uh, rear arc gun that can just run away from you early could be great. <laughs> uh, he's hesitant, but does put down the he's lock. Putting there. down the lock, he's saying, "I need to get aggressive now." This is this scrum is going to clear and we will see who has the advantage going into the following turn this is gonna this is gonna be explosive uh yeah oh yeah all right looks like everyone does have a green token for the most part though um, yep. everyone is able to get an action let's let's uh, lock it in here commander Malaris activates the ability all focuses turn to hits or evades on the coordinating dice the corresponding dice, excuse me. All right, I think first to shoot here is going to be Malarius and Gaelic. Uh, so we'll see. Looks like uh, Gaelic is going to take a range two ion cannon into Keo. Maybe we'll even break that lock onto uh, DT798. Here we go. Hit, hit, crit to get it started. Oh, yeah. Ion Cannon, three agility, and that looks like we are taking one damage and uh, two Ion Tokens. That's a guaranteed ionization for Keo, uh, which means that if they use their force, they will not be able to do a side slip next turn. They are forced to do an ionized maneuver. Yeah, unfortunate there to see that Ion Cannon come down. That Ion Cannon has been integral in this game so far uh, to break these uh, rebel locks. Uh, we do not want any rebels out here getting locks to shoot those proton torpedoes. Ion cannon, usually a war control, uh, a, a dial control thing, but turns out pretty great in a uh, <laughs> control uh, effect of no lock. Here we go, Commander Malaris firing here. Three hits. And a blank there going into 
the B wing, I believe. Yeah, I see. Into ten nub. He's debating spending the charge for elusive. This was a uh, a range one shot. So this is a primary three damage, or do you attempt for the elusive? Well, he can. He could have still shot that uh, magpulse missile at range. Um, well, here we go. Well, I mean, it's if you're if you're debating elusive, it's going to be a primary, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's two shields onto ten nub. Has two of them left. We just wrapped up initiative five here. Shifts to the Rebellion. Wes and Aaron Kraken. Let's see what order we're going to be going in here. I think this is... Kraken? Kraken, yeah. Oh, yeah. Spends a focus for two hits and a crit. Ooh, no results there. Uh, well, that's going to be elusive from... For backdraft. Backdraft, yeah. Then spends a focus, takes one, still has shields up there, so blinking off one shield. We'll see if Wes is going to take a shot over there as well. We'll get the crack in action first. So we're going to give the B-Wing in action. It's going to be a focus. Focus roll. Are we getting the roll? Yeah, we got the fake roll. Oh, because he stressed them up. Yep. yep. Failed to roll into the rock. Four dice coming in here from Wes Jansen. Here's the reroll. No focus out there. That's going to be two hits and a crit with a proton torpedo coming in from Wes in the backdraft. And no results there. Hit, hit, crit. We're going a crit into the hole. First blood on backdraft, and it is a loose stabilizer. Loose stabilizer is a crit that says if you do not perform a straight maneuver, you will take a damage, and then the card flips over. Ooh, it is a red action. You cannot link it. Okay, that is a point we'll have to update real quick. Here we go. Big attack here from the first order. Had four dice, and looks like we're going to be dealing one damage. Looks like that was into the Y wing into Dutch. Yes. Down to two. All right, yeah, it wasn't the roll, but it was just the regular red action. So he automatically gets the stress, of course. No, that was in the Kraken. No, 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 no. I, that, that, this, this last shot was in the Kraken. No, I, th I thought Kraken was... Yeah, he's uh, got the blue sleeve on there. Oh, he he does, has yeah. his stuff all color-coordinated. Yeah, he does. Kraken down to one. All right, here we see. There's a stress that just went down on the Scorch using his ability. It's going to be a four-die shot going into Dutch, I'm assuming. Could be into Kraken. Uses optics for four. No, he doesn't. No focus out there. All three of those are going in. How much health does he have left? No, or did we just it. lose Dutch? We just lost Dutch. Dutch no, no, leaves why, the table. Why is he leaving the table? That's, he's, he's been taking damage for a while. No, 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 but he should still stay at initiative four. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. So, not shouldn't be leaving yet. <laughs> Very close to leaving, though. Yeah, <laughs> he has been destroyed. The points will be awarded. Two to six. All right, we'll see. DT uh, takes a strain to fire uh, that uh, three die attack at Kraken. And here we go. Uh, two crits. Optics. Ooh, could optics. He has a choice. Maybe you don't want to be strained with Keo shooting you still. This no is coming focus. from DT. DT. Yeah. Hit crit crit going into Kraken, and that will take out Kraken no matter what. D d just needed one damage there. Wow, we said that this round would be explosive, and it sure has been. We're still finishing up initiative four.
Ember taking a shot now into 10 nub. Range two or three. Hit crit, spend for three. Did roll the evade. It's gonna be taken two. Two shields down. We're into the hole now for 10 nub. Looks like they're concurring here with judges. They're just double checking an attack. All right, we see the Y wing take a shot. Okay. All right, two hits and a focus. Evade, focus, blank there. Elusive reroll. Got it. No damage. And yes, they did catch the fact that Dutch was supposed to have a focus there. So he would have probably spent that on offense, correct? Yes. Yeah. He was like, oh, I did have that focus and I just, he was a little flustered and threw away the focus and picked yeah. up the ship. All good. That means we would have done one damage there. We're going to have to update. Just double check here. And another four die shot coming in here. Spins the stress as a focus. 10 nub. Doing the good work. Double evades. Not going to be enough, I think, for a backdraft. Going to go down. Yep. Make it, make it a crit. Why not? Make it a crit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then we remove both of the uh, rebel ships, Kraken and Dutch there. Wow. Okay, so when the smoke cleared, a score of six to nine... Uh, in favor of the first order. Wow. All right, range two from Keo. Last shot here. Uh, Has the force. I wouldn't even spend. Yeah, he is it, unable to uh, to regen. Uh, double blanks. Yeah, he gets it. Okay. One hit going into DT. All right, we're going into the planning phase now. We're going to go ahead and score assault at the satellite array points. Let's see some measuring here. No, uh, no contesting what? there. Is Keo in? No. All right, looks like the uh, first order grabs the middle one. And I think it's just one point for the first one order. Point for FO. Yeah, that looks like Wes and Ember once again are. Uh, contesting that top one. Now, I did hear a pretty awesome story about our current uh, points leader, Nicholas God, that happened during Swiss. Um, during Swiss, he was playing against Timo Rabe, and um, they finished up their game. There was a dice exchange on the, the very last dice exchange. Nicholas won. They reported the scores. Everything is fine. And then when we, they were discussing the game, kind of going back and forth, like many players do, they like to discuss the game yeah. and seeing what could have gone learn, one learn, way or what, another. What can you do better? Right. They discovered that Timo had forgotten to roll in a range bonus die on the last shot because he died with only one health. Mm. Immediately, Nicholas goes to the judges, cancels the result, say, I'm not submitting that result. We need to do we need to re-roll yeah. this. Timo rolled the die, got the evade, and because of that, that meant Nicholas lost that game of Swiss. So just like big props. Some people would look, will look at it as like you, are you congratulating somebody for doing the right thing? Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I that am. That is what I am doing. Yes, that is what I am doing because it's just a reality of not many people. There aren't many people who would. So there, there, or let me, let me yeah. say, that, say it this way. There are people who would say, well, the results were in already. 
Yeah. I, right? Like, uh, that. that man. is... You, I, 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 I know <laughs> of people who would say this, right? Yeah. That's that's a hard decision to make. Like, we well, already played the game, so, um, but, like, like it was like, oh, the broken game state. Like, that score is submitted, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that but, that is awesome. Um, how is the other table doing? Uh, we don't we don't know yet. Not we'll sure. get a report here from our sideline reporter Jason Grimwolf here very soon. Score the score is still only two to one. Cut. What what are they doing over there? They're just tying on everything. They might be. Still waiting for round to end. Got it, got mm. it. It sounds like they're being maybe they they are having a very three. calculating round. <laughs> All right, so um, they are going to be starting very soon the uh, Atomic Mass Games report, where they're going to go yeah. ahead and talk about what's coming for the future. We have uh, via text. We got Ryan Stanizuski, uh sideline reporting Will, there. Will. Well, uh, and we have Will, Will yeah. taking video. Taking video. All right. Very nice. All right. Super excited for those that video and or pictures. All right. So we have we have our, our direct line ready to report. All right. We're in planning of uh, a turn number four. I think it should be. Yeah, turn number four. Forty-seven minutes has elapsed in this round of X-wing. Uh, a lot of ships to move. A lot of a lot of bumps to do. Oh, big update here from the sideline. Score change of eight to seven. And Andrew Cox is ahead, Arvel and Arvel is down. off the board. All right. Uh, AMG going to be on YouTube or Twitch. They may actually be on Facebook. Um, um, not not sure. Yeah. What time is the final round? Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to get a lunch today. Uh, we may, move, be, may be moving straight into the next round here. Um, is it going to be on the stream, Xbox? I, I can neither confirm nor deny that. It sounds like maybe the professional casuals, uh, which they they're the MCP stream. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Since they're they don't have games going on, we'll be streaming it, which is great. All right, it says yeah, going live at noon central. So that is about right now. Yeah. Um, can, can you watch two things at the same time? Uh, yeah, there is a multi-stream. <laughs> yeah, that does okay. exist. All right. Can you, can you physically do it? Like yeah. you're m mentally watching. I, I cannot. <laughs> I personally cannot. I don't have the mental bandwidth for that. But that's me. That's just me. Yeah, that's just me. <laughs> All right. Looks like we have a couple dials down. Looks like we may be waiting for one more. My my wife uh, said it one time. She goes, "Do you own your mental highway?" You know, that is a one-lane road. It has a one-lane. One it, it, it is. It is a one-lane road, one way. <laughs> it has. We. I can. I have massive amounts of yeah. information that can go yeah. through on that one focus 300 thing. Three hundred miles an hour, uh, but it one car, <laughs> one thing only. Yeah, only one car allowed at the same time too. <laughs> one That's car right. allowed. Uh, yeah. Hey man, so, sometimes that's just that, that, that's, that's, sometimes that's how the best work gets done. Although there's a motorcycle in the convention hall. <laughs> just a little bit. All righty. How many torpedoes are still in the tubes? I don't think we've seen a single one. I think all the shots that have been have been in range one four dies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pre Adepticon, they asked us if uh, if we would want to stream the uh, stream the panel. But we told them I think we're going to be in the we're going to be in the thick of it. We'd love to. But we'd love to. But obviously, our priority here is the players and bringing you this live X-wing action. 
And uh, like I said, we have sideline reporters there. We have Will with some video who's going to be doing some recording. And once we know information, we will share it. And feel free, for those of you who are watching the stream, if you want to share some things there as well, that would be great. Of course, we're going to take... Uh, official word from our correspondents just to make sure that we don't have any shenanigans going on. We love you, but we just want to make sure that we're, we're do doing some accurate reporting. Oh, yeah. Maybe we did get one from Wes. I do see a charge spent there on Wes. Okay, maybe we did get a proton torpedo there. All right, here we go. The road roll has the gone re -roll. down. They tied. And here we go. We get started with those lowest initiative pilots and get us started. Kyo Venzi is ionized, so must. At one bank, uh, spent the fours last turn. It's just going to slap down the focus. Looks to still be in range one of that bottom objective or in range one now. All right, uh, here, here comes a 10. K. Love to see that 2K. Oh, mm, yeah. Yes, we are looking to get some shots onto Ember. Already have a shield down over there. Would be a four point swing if you could take down that tie BA. Uh, looks to be a four straight from uh, <coughs> DT. Got to love the smell of uh, diesel fuel. Diesel fuel here in the <laughs> uh, in the convention hall. Thank you to the <laughs> players over there. Whoever is uh, running up that motorcycle, yeah, really appreciate it. Or a, a truck. I know that there was some game that had like a like a Hummer Humvee thing as part of their display. So I might be just getting that out of here. All right, so we got that ship off the board. Quick update or uh, re replaced on the board. Now there is a, a text update from Jason in the chat. We'll go ahead and go over that in the next planning phase uh, for the Andrew Cox game. All right, we got a barrel roll there for DT-798. All right, yeah, maybe, maybe you don't want to be facing that rock, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, looks like may dodge the arc of 10 as well uh, if Ember plans to get out of, out of dodge. All right, next up looks to be, uh, we have Scorch to go next, or Ember. Probably going to be Scorch. Uh, probably to see it too hard to stay in the fight, maybe. Oh, actually, looks to be a two straight. Okay. Just keep it a casual. I mean, you knew that uh, that Keo was going to be ionized. It was a chance to have a bit of a face-off between Keo and Scorch. That looks like that lands. Scorch takes takes its ability. That's going to be a four dice shot. Yeah. Into Keo. Keo is down a shield. Yep. Has already taken damage. So yeah, definitely a, a realistic possibility that we lose um, Keo here, especially because Scorch has fanatical and optics available. Uh, I think uh, Ember is the last initiative forward to move here. Just uh, also keeping it a little bit slow. Keeping it casual. Trying to see if you can catch Wes again. Yeah. Also, uh, hap just happens to be keeps himself at range one of that objective back there. Uh, that too. So that's a good bonus. A good bonus, yeah. All right, uh, takes a lock with the, um, oh, what is that ship ability uh, for the uh, tie, tie Baron? That's a good that's a good question for you, Dion. What's the ship ability for the, for the Tie the Baron? The name of it? I know yeah. how it works. I know how it works. Let's see. Uh, it's going to be fine-tuned thrusters. I told you it was fine-tuned thrusters. Yeah, right? obviously, yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought it was fine-tuned, but I was like, no, that's, that's controls. Yep. 
All right, here we go. West going a little bit faster. Three straight. Facing down Gaelic. Wow. Gaelic hasn't moved yet, though. That's, Ma that's That one's Malaris. Oh, uh, Malaris. Excuse me. Yeah. Malaris uh, probably ends up either bumping or flying over. And if she puts that K turn, the West's not going to be happy about that. To have uh, No, uh, Ma Malaris is stressed. Oh, you're, oh, you're yeah. right, because she yeah. used her ability yeah. last turn. Malaris is stressed. All right, so stressed. that means I mean, she's going to have to just... Hey, slap, slaps down the lock on to Scorch. That's... I mean, that's a great play. <laughs> that's a great play. You know that Scorch isn't moving. All right. It looks like we do get a four straight. Um, so I think the idea here, Malaris uh, goes four straight. And no, it's, kind a, of, it's, a, it's a two straight. They were trying to do the four straight. Do the straight side to straight. side. Yeah. Okay. Well, two straight. It puts Malaris on, on line to kind of take over for that top objective. Yeah. Where Ember, Ember is, but Ember can come back in. Tag out, Ember. Tag yeah. out. <laughs> All right. Will the final be on this stream? It will be on this stream in just a few minutes. As soon as we're done with this game, hopefully we'll jump into the next one. We may have a quick break for the final uh, finalist players. That's right. You're watching the official coverage of Adepticon 2023 and the Star Wars X-Wing World Championship. Boop, boop, doo, doo. All right. Uh, Malware's just... Puts down that focus, uh, is uh, getting uh, <laughs> taking a big shot from the B wing here. Uh, and normally these B wings, uh, uh, you you would think they're like, oh, he did a K turn, so he's not going to have any actions or That's modifiers. Uh, no, uh, this uh, this ten um, B wing can spin that stress that he got from the the K turn as a focus. So still. At least a single modified attack here. Lieutenant Gaelic taking that too hard and facing down Wes Jansen at range one. We're gonna have uh, we're gonna have another explosive round here. Lots of dice. Be ready. This is gonna be fast moving. Yeah. Thankfully for Mario, still gonna 100% get off that proton torpedo because he shoots before Gaelic can fire that ion cannon. All right, uh, I think we'll have West to shoot first. Fires that last proton torpedo. Uh, all right, Scorch. Uh, good luck. Spin the lock, hit crit so far. Uh, it's gonna be hit, crit, crit coming into Scorch. Gonna need to see some paint here. And here we go. Scorch, two blanks and a focus. He is going to be able to avoid two of those, but that's two critical damage coming in. Uh, if we have a double here, that's going to be it. We're looking for direct hits. D damage engine, second one, wounded pilot. Ooh. So uh, increasing the difficulty of those hard turns. Uh, wounded pilot, after, after you perform an action, you got to roll a die to see if you will become stressed. Yeah. Uh, primarily, I think the one that's going to matter in this case is going to be the damage engine. Yep. I'm uh, going to turn off those two hard blues, uh, going to make them two hard whites, uh, which is really going to hurt a little bit here uh, for Scorch's next maneuvers. All right, I think that's going to go to uh, Lieutenant Gaelic up next. Update uh, on the panel here, by the way. It's uh, MCP stuff first is what they're covering. Okay. And again, we'll keep you updated. All right. Going to be a range one on to uh, the B-Wing here from Let, Gaelic. Let's get it started. So the Rebellion started us off with a big hit, nearly taking Scorch off the board with Wes Jansen's range to attack. DT now debating whether to fire... Oh, this is a Gaelic. Gaelic, sorry. Okay, who's he going to fire at here? I think it's going to be at the B-Wing. The B-Wing has one agility. We'll find out here. That's four dice. It's choosing to use the Ion Cannon, whichever uh, one it is. It's going to be at range yeah. one. So has a focus token. So he could just leave it, but, I mean, you might as well spend it. No one's shooting. You guarantee the uh, ionization. Uh, so, Okay. Takes one damage one and damage. one ion. Uh, only three hole remaining on the B-Wing. So he chose to hold on to the stress. Maybe that's the 
the pause here? Well, n no, because it was an ion cannon that did four damage. Oh, he. There's literally nothing he can do about that. It was four, I thought it was two hits to. No, he spent the focus. No, oh, he didn't spend the no, focus. The focus is right there. I'd rather spend that attack on. So it's it would be just one damage. It, uh, it's ion. He, he, no, he. Yeah, one damage, three ion. So he did spend the focus. No, he didn't. One damage, three ion. Oh yeah, he would have had to spend the focus. Yeah, he 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 turned. He converted the hits. So they just haven't removed the token. No okay. one is no one is shooting Gaelic. So this is true. All right, Ember. Uh, taking a shot, probably at the B-Wing as well. Here we go, trying to get rid of that one agility ship. Converts for two, takes a stress. Here we go, Ember defending against the B-Wing. It's currently strained. Debating whether to spend it. Spending the focus, avoids taking any damage. Elusive trigger, seeing if you can just kind of luck into one. Risky getting rid of the focus, turns it into a blank. It doesn't pay off, takes the second shield down onto Ember. All right, here we see Scorch. Here we go. Can we take out Keo before they get a chance to attack? Oh. All right, going to be three. Uh, gotta spin the focus to live. Gonna take a crit though. Elusive first. We have a chance. Blank okay. to blank to blank. Converts with the force. We'll be taking one shield on Keo. Uh, no, that's gonna be shield. It's just shield. Just yeah. shield. Yeah. 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 Thankfully, it had that extra shield in there. Uh, to not take that crit on the hull. Don't do not want to see any face up damages right now. Lots of back and forth here. Score still six to ten. Nothing's off the board quite yet. There's a lot of things that are a lot closer though. All right, I think this is gonna be. Ooh, big update here. Um, end of the round five score for the um, for the the other game, Bartosh versus Mario. Oh, sorry, not versus Mario. Who's, who's our other player over there? Andrew Cox. A Andrew Cox. Um, the Reaper went down by a procket. Score is 12 to 10. Bartosh leading. Next attack here that we have on the board. Spending the elusive charge against the B-Wing. Did it get an evade? Three damage going into 10 numb. Did we just lose that B-Wing? Uh, yep. Goes down 6 to 15. Nicholas slowly closing the door on Mario. Says, I'm trying to close it. Can you move? I'm trying to close the door. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it if you would just like step away a little bit. I'm just trying to make some room here for my TIE fighters. <laughs> All right, we got another shot here. Here comes Keo, range one into Scorch. Can he clear this TIE Fighter off the board? Got two hits, had to spend the force earlier on defense. Two evades, oh lives. That's massive. Scorch. Uh, Mario needed those points. Oh yeah. Uh, after points are scored, it looks like, we'll have to measure the middle one. I think Keo grabs the bottom one by themselves. Yep. Okay. Is the center contested or the two there? Is it two to one? James gonna pop up and find out. We just got a note here from X-Wing. Looks like X-Wing time at the panel. We'll prepare to give you guys the information as it comes through.
They're double checking objective points, but I think we are at a score of 7 to 17. We have James at the table, double checking all of the health and the objective points, making sure that we have this matched up. We want to keep this nice and accurate. Make sure to stick around after the game. We're going to be doing some giveaways brought to you by Atomic Mass Games. Thank you to their support and providing some of this awesome world championship swag available to the viewers of our stream in the official coverage of the X-Wing World Championships. All right, 66 minutes in. Nicholas controlling the lead here. 17 to seven, needs three more points to lock it out. Could get it by taking Keo Venzi out. Has enough ships also to do it with the scenario as well. Uh, Nicholas just has to make a decision and execute on how to finish this out. If you're Mario, you need to work on getting some ships off the board. What's the closest opportunity he's got for that, James? That's definitely going to be Scorch. Uh, definitely going to be pretty easy to take out. Um, has that damaged engine and wounded pilot. So you know where he's going to be in just a few seconds. Uh, also pretty close to going down. It's going to be DT-798. Um, <clears throat> but DT could definitely just be doing a five straight here and barrel roll to get that top objective. Ember is also on two hull, uh, but has Lone Wolf and Elusive. So going to be very difficult to take down. What was our uh, update from the panel? Uh, so far, we we don't have any con anything they, they concrete. Said X wing, and anything concrete from Ryan. I think he's probably typing something out and, and giving us a, a full page. Okay, very exciting. F from uh, from the chat, it sounds like we're talking a little bit about the YT twenty four hundred. It was rumored by AMG that they were re releasing the ship, uh, but with some tweaks. Sounds like it is a going to be a three dice turret. We'll see what other uh, what other changes they have. But let's focus in here. Ships are moving here. Top four of the World Championships of X Wing. Two bank out. Nicholas trying to control that bottom left hand objective with Scorch. Going to go ahead and focus. That ship is sitting at one hull currently. Uh, this is the role for wounded pilot. No stress. All right. Looks like we have a turn away from Ember. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, looks to be just taking a take a strain. Are we going to barrel roll back towards the objective? Oh yeah, barrel roll, barrel roll towards down. the center. Yeah, barrel roll down. Uh, that probably means that uh, either Malaris or uh, DT are going for that top objective. So it takes a deplete to do a roll, and then can take a uh, evade or focus as needed. Probably a focus there. Uh, the other match is not over yet. Still going on. We'll get an update once we are ready. Jason Grimm will update us. We have DT-798 rolling to the top here, trying to control the objective. Nicholas deciding to try to take the sure thing, split up the forces, and take the guaranteed points. Uh, looks like we're going to see a one hard from Malaris here. Mm -hmm. uh, looks looks to be trying to grab some uh, obstruction in case we see the t t Talon from uh, Wes. 
We see a one hard from uh, Gaelic here. And that's probably not going to complete, or it's very, very close. Nicholas is trying to control the center here with the presence of both Gaelic and Ember. How many fingers can we get to touch the same ships here? <laughs> <laughs> this is four different people. See four different, four different hands, <laughs> eight different hands in there. <laughs> All right, quick updates while they're while they're playing uh, playing Twister. Uh, YT twenty four hundred con confirmed. Looks to have some different ship abilities. Brings standardized loadouts. Three dice turret may have some ability that stretches it to a four dice turret store championship kits are coming out on may 4th Ooh. store championship invites get an actual world invite not an lcq i know that was something uh from before that there was concern about so it could be a uh, there's a mandalore themed there's a regional kit that gets a premium invite which has a certain number of buys for next year i'm not sure what that's going to be, but a first round buy is always valuable. Looks like there's some organized play kits called the Children of Mandalore event kit. Sounds fun. We'll get again more details. I'm just giving you the highlights right the, now. Was that the Thai starter pack up there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and yeah, and looks like oh, we're releasing the, the Thai bomber separately. Their own separately. Hit crit crit. Coming in from Natty. West Jansen, looking at Scorch, trying to clear that, and oh, that is goodness. that right that's there. Gonna... That's the that that is yeah. that that locks it. You needed West to kill Scorch to make it only 7 to 19. They're going through it. Well, uh, we'll finish out the round. They'll for finish sure. it out, yeah. Let's see a two range two attack at Gaelic. No dice. Double there. blanks there from Keo. Range for objectives. Yep, one, two, three for the first order. That is now a score of seven to 20. And with that, the handshake. Great job. Congratulations, Nicholas God, getting into the final of the X-Wing World Championships. And Mario, great run as the runner-up. Thank you to ISO, Danko, Baffle, Trojan, Prophet, Shadow, Tycho, Spice, Raider, Lancer, Fallen, Row 6, 626, Chief, and J-List, our Grand Admiral Patrons. And all of our Gold Squadron patrons and community members, thank you for your support. Gold Squadron, out.